Hello everyone, and thanks for watching. Today we're going to uh, we're going to play around with Node.js a little bit. We're going to create a little app that uh, backup backs up a directory on your machine, and we're going to learn a little bit about how Node works, how it works with file systems. We're going to learn how to uh, add some packages for Node to use some Linux style commands like rsync and cron. We're going to learn how to um, make our little app work on both uh, Linux Mac systems as well as Windows. Uh, and we'll have a little bit of fun along the way doing it. So this one's going to be a, a bit of a casual video. Uh, if I make a mistake, I'm just going to keep going and we'll play around and we'll we'll fix it along the way. But uh, this is based on a blog post that I wrote recently just on um, using um, Node uh, as a way to back up some directories just uh, because I received a an external hard drive recently and it reminded me that I have a lot of files that I don't uh, don't always have two or even three copies of as most people usually recommend so this is a good uh, good excuse to learn something new and uh, create a little backup system uh, as well along the way so what I'm going to do <clears throat> basically your ultimate goal is to have a little script that's running in the background uh, 24 7 that pretty much on a regular basis copies the contents of folder A to folder B. And that's pretty much it. Um, that way you can, uh, you know, whenever you take some new pictures or, or whatever it is that you want to make sure you have extra copies of, you can just place them in folder A and on a weekly basis the contents of folder A will be copied over to folder B. And you can run that script on whatever machine you have handy. I'm going to use a little uh, extra laptop that I have, an old one with only two gigabytes of memory that's been sitting around, not really having a lot of use for. You can run it on your main machine. You can run it on any machine you want. Um, the most important thing, I think, really, is that the machine needs to be running all the time uh, just so the backup happens on a regular basis and the, you know the computer's not off while it's running. So we're going to assume that whatever system you want to deploy this on, and again, it's nice because you can do it on Linux, Mac, or Windows, doesn't matter which one you want to do, but we're going to presume that whatever it is that you're going to run this on is going to be running 24 hours a day. So let's uh, let's get started. So let's make a new directory and we'll call it a Node Backup Project. So right now I'm, uh, you see Windows in the background, but I'm running Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is technically, this is Ubuntu version 20 that I'm working on right now. But along the way, we're going to show how this uh, app that we build is also works on, uh, on Windows itself. We'll run it in uh, PowerShell. So I'm going to change the directory into the project that I just created. And then I'm going to open a new instance of VS Code into that directory. All right, here we are. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So let's start by initializing the project. So I'm going to open up a terminal here, control tilde, and I'm going to do npm init dash y to just say yes to all the defaults. Okay. Then I'm going to create a file called backup.js. So this is the JavaScript file that's going to run the backup uh, process. And there's three packages that we're going to use for this. We're going to use a package called rsync, which is a uh, basically a, a node wrapper around the rsync uh, copy function that exists in uh, in Unix systems. So basically, you know, it lets you call rsync from Node. So if you're not familiar with rsync, let's uh, quickly just take a look at how rsync works. So rsync should be available on pretty much any, the majority of, of uh, Linux distributions or Mac systems that you might use. So if I do rsync dash dash version, I get some information about it and all it really does is if I create a new folder called source dir and another folder called destination dir 
And in source directory, I'm going to create a new file and call it uh, blah blah dot txt. Hello, doesn't matter what the content is. So in the source directory, you can see I have this txt file, and the destination directory is empty. If I run rsync dash a, a stands for archive, so archiving a full uh, directory. Otherwise, it's going to assume that you're just working with a single file. Uh, and I'm going to copy synchronize the contents of source dir to destination dir. And I'm just hitting tab to autocomplete there and hit enter. And then let's go look in destination directory. And oh, look, blah, blah is there. So that's the, you know, Linux command for doing what we're going to want to do uh, when we create our app. So the rsync npm package basically is just a wrapper around that that calls our sync in the background and and does the same thing so we're going to want that we're going to want a package called cron and what cron is is a uh, javascript implementation of uh, the cron concept which is basically a uh, the ability to schedule something to happen on a regular basis you can do it you know by the minute by the hour by the day by the week by the month by the year and uh, it's it's pretty much the standard of what you use when you want to schedule tasks. And the last package we're going to use is called .env, and that's likely that you've used that one before. That just lets you create an environment variable file that has uh, you know private information that you don't necessarily want to commit to your repository. So we're going to use uh, the names of the folders that I want to back up uh, on my computer. We'll put them in the .env file. And those those folders are probably going to be different than the folders that you or any other user use when they want to do uh, their backups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to npm install cron rsync and dot env and hit enter. And you'll see those are now dependencies of my project. So at this point, I can create my backup.js file. So let's go look at backup.js. I'm going to copy this example that I've created here, and we'll go through it to explain how it works. So we're going to require .env, which lets us use a .env file. We haven't created it yet, but we will. We'll require cronjob and rsync, the two uh, packages that are going to cron is going to handle the scheduling. rsync is going to handle the copying. So rsync is equal to new rsync, similar to the uh, script that we ran before the archive flag and we're going to use the source directory from env and we're also going to copy to the destination directory which also comes from our env file again which we haven't created yet next we use the uh, cron package to create a new cron job it runs that based on a cron string that we haven't provided we're going to put in our env file and doing so it runs the the uh, runs a function here, which executes the rsync based on the source and destination directory. And when it's done, it says it's completed and it provides the status code. So we're looking for the source directory in the environment, the destination directory, and the cron string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called .env. I'm going to say source directory based destination directory paste and cron string paste. So we're going to want to set values for all of these. So our source directory is going to be example source. Our destination directory is going to be example destination. And our cron string is going to be, if you're not familiar with cron, you can go to uh, a website called crontab.guru, which will let you type in all kinds of different cron strings, whatever you think, uh, whatever you think you might want to try. And it will explain to you in plain English exactly uh, what that cron string does. Does So for example, here, zero, zero, minute, hour, and then asterisk means all of them. So at the zero minute of the zero hour on every day, on every month, we're going to execute a certain task. So basically at midnight of every single day, run this task. So if I was to change this to, you know, 
every minute, every hour. This would be at every single minute, run this certain task. And a lot of uh, packages, including the cron package that we're using now, supports an additional asterisk to handle seconds as well. So what I can do is if I go back to my project here and say that my cron string is at every second, of every minute, of every day, of every month, uh, what was it? Minute, hour, day, month, and then day of the week as well, including seconds. So we're going to need a six, 16 total. This will run whatever that I'm, whatever function I'm using will run every single second for as long as the app is running. So that's where I check cron string here and it will run the rsync function copying from my source directory to my destination directory and then start the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file from the destination directory just to make sure that it works. And I'm going to do node backup and hit enter. Completed, completed. It's running every second, remember? Oh, look, it's there. Now, because it's copying and synchronizing every second, if I delete this file inside my destination directory, as soon as I delete it, it's just going to appear again. So I hit delete, gone, back one second later. So our copy script is working very, very well. I'm going to control C to close it down. And that's great. So this relies on the rsync uh, function that exists in a Linux environment and a Mac environment. So how do we get this working on Windows and to get it working on Windows as well is really, it's actually really neat. Um, before we do that, we're going to need to get this out of our Linux environment and get this whole uh, package that we've created uh, running on Windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize it as a Git repository so I can basically push it to GitHub and then clone it into uh, a Windows uh, environment. So let's do that now. So I'm going to do git, uh, git init, initialize it. I'm going to create a .git ignore file as you're likely familiar with, which will include node modules, which we don't need because we can run npm install to create that each time. We want to not commit the env file because that's what's going to hold my personal uh, data, the files that I'm trying to back up here. And that should be it. So I've already gone ahead and created the repository before getting started here. So basically what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add all the files with git init dot git commit uh, message first commit. And then I'm going to add the remote repository here. And I'm going to do git push upstream origin. Uh, Master. What am I doing here? Oh, it's because I'm using HTTP instead of SSH. It's not what I want. Let me switch it over quickly. Git remote set URL URL origin to the SSH URL instead of the HTTPS one. And then let's do that's better. So when I refresh, there it is. You can see it here. I just committed it one minute ago. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to switch over to PowerShell. Now this is cool because I don't, even though I use Windows, I don't use PowerShell ever. I don't even really know how to use PowerShell. But before I recorded this video, I did go through the uh, minimal effort of installing Git and installing Node.js on Windows. And that's pretty much all you need in order to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Git version, make sure that Git is there, and I'm going to use uh, Node version. So I have Git and I have Node, and that's all that I need in order to get this to work. So I'm going to copy the URL from my repository that I just uh, pushed there. And I'm going to do git clone demo node backup, what I just created. And I'm going to 
clone demo node backup. So if I do CD demo, now I have the same project that I'm working on right here, but in uh, Windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this project so that it works in Windows because when I do node, it should be the same thing, right? I'm going to use node backup. I'm going to run my uh, node file, except, pardon me, here's an error. I need to um, create the environment file that has the source directory, destination directory, and the cron string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another instance of VS code. I'm going to open that folder that I just created, demo node backup. So this is the Windows version. I'm going to create the .env file and I'm going to paste, oh, not there. I'm going to paste the same contents from my env file that I was working with before. There we go. So now the env file is there. I should be able to run node backup.js and have it work, right? Fails. Cannot find module.env. Oh, because I didn't use didn't install my dependencies first. NPM install. All right, let's try that again. Uh, backup completed with status code one. Hey, that's really good. But is it true? Apple source, blah, blah, blah. Destination. Let's delete that destination file and see how it goes. Ready? Try it again. Oh, it doesn't actually seem to be working, does it? Probably because look what it's doing every second. It's trying to run rsync.execute. And if you go on here at PowerShell, let's say, what version of rsync are we running? We're not running any version. Windows doesn't have uh, rsync. So what can we do about that? And how do we deal with this situation? Well, the answer is really interesting. It's that Windows has a equivalent version of rsync called RoboCopy. <clears throat> and the neat thing about RoboCopy is it works exactly the same way. RoboCopy and then the source directory and then the destination directory. So if I just literally just replace the word rsync with RoboCopy, I could copy from the source to the destination when I'm using PowerShell. That's it. The only reason why program doesn't work is because rsync doesn't exist. So when I try and call rsync with the flags you know, archive and the source directory and destination directory, it doesn't work because rsync doesn't exist on Windows. So what if I were to say rsync dot now the rsync package has a function called executable, which act executable, which actually lets you send the name of the program that you want to run. So you can override the default that uses rsync and run whatever you want to with the flags, archive, source, and destination. So because I'm on Windows now, what if I ran it instead with RoboCopy? Save that again. Nothing's appearing in my destination folder. So now instead of using rsync, it's going to use the executable called RoboCopy, the source and destination node backup.js. Enter. Let's go look over here. Oh, look, it works. That's it. It's exactly the same thing, except it's calling RoboCopy instead of rsync and now we're back to status code zero which means success how cool is that that's pretty that's pretty cool the problem is though now what if i commit these changes now it only works on windows because linux doesn't have rsync mac doesn't or sorry linux doesn't have robocopy mac doesn't have robocopy the fact that i changed it to use robocopy instead of rsync means that i just traded one problem for another only works on windows doesn't work on mac so what is the answer? The answer is we make it conditional. And Node has a really cool uh, 
value called process.platform, which will um, have a value of Win32 when you're on Windows. It will have a value of, here we go, I want to say Linux when you're on Linux, and a value of Darwin when you're on Mac. So Linux and Mac uh, both have our sync, so you don't have to worry about that. The only thing that we need to do is worry about Windows. So if I say const copy program is equal to, let's say process.platform, and the condition where process.platform is win32, let's do robocopy, and the condition where, oh, sorry, not win32, win32, when it's not Windows, then we're going to use rsync. And then the executable we use is going to be copy program. So on Windows, that'll be robocopy, and on Linux, that will be rsync. So let's try running it again. Still getting status code zero, even on PowerShell. If I delete this, gone. Oh, shows up again. Great. So I've made some changes. I actually made the changes here onto the uh, repository in the Windows system. So I'm going to do add. SM. I'm going to say that's now cross platform support. Ah, oh, crumb. All right, hold on. I don't have my uh, Git credential set up in Windows, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to copy this code here back to the original project that I have in uh, in Linux, where my credentials exist. I'm going to replace it, save, and I'll do the same thing here. So even though I'm working with Linux, if I say platform is 132, I'm going to get RoboCopy, otherwise get rsync. So when I run it, load back up. It's copying each time. If I delete the file, oh, it's back again. So it works in Linux, and we've already seen with the same code, it works in Windows as well. And that's pretty much it. So you can use that. What you can do is you can, in your env file, you can take any uh, source directory, any destination directory, and you can keep this program running as long as you want to. And it will always, on whatever schedule you like, copy the contents of the source directory to the destination directory, which is really neat. So let's say that you want to run this process, you know, in the background all the time. Like if I run node backup JS hit enter, it's going to keep running on the cron schedule that I created as long as I have this terminal and VS code open. But as soon as I close this, it's going to crash the process that I'm running. So we want to know how do we run it in the background and manage it in the background. So to do that, we install a tool called PM2. So npm install, and we need that installed globally. On our machine, we want it available anywhere that we are. So we use the dash G flag and we say PM2. So I've already got it installed, but running this again should be pretty harmless. I want to be able to say PM2 version. It should give me a version number there. So now, instead of running node backup.js, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run PM2 backup, PM2 start backup dot js and hit enter and what that does is it starts it's the same as before it runs it as a process it's running right now if i delete this text file from the destination it should there see it appears again notice i'm not getting like a backup completed log printed each time but if i do pm2 logs backup the name of the process that i created watch see the logs are still being created inside of the uh, PM2 environment. So what it's basically doing is it's just running your node project, but in the background, 
so that I can close this terminal, I can close VS Code, I can walk away, and it will still be running all the time. And the copy script will be running based on the value of the cron string. So I can set it as a background process and I can change this to run every, you know, every day at midnight. So every day at midnight, it will copy whatever's in the source directory here to whatever's in the destination directory here. And obviously I can change those to like an external drive with a bunch of pictures or important files on it that copies over to some other um, destination on a different drive so that if one fails, I have, I have a separate copy of it. And that's pretty much uh, what you need to do. So I'm going to start PM2 running on the little laptop that I created, run this backup script on a regular basis, maybe once a week or so, so that it just copies over all the uh, important files that I have in my source directory onto the destination directory on my external hard drive so that I have a backup. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is that this does assume that you are running this machine uh, 24 seven. If, uh, although PM2 does run your node process in the background and it actually automatically restarts it. If it crashes, it will not start it up automatically. If I were to say reboot my computer right now, and there's ways to do that. Um, you can set it up so that PM2 starts when your computer starts and it runs any apps that, uh, that were already running. You can look up how to do that yourself, but this, um, we are assuming that whatever um, machine you put this backup script onto is going to be running 24 hours a day like a real server would so that you can uh, trust that the, the copy script is happening at a consistent time. And that's pretty much uh, that. I'm going to include a link to the blog post that this video is based on in the description of the video. Definitely check it out. It goes into a little bit more detail on a number of things, including um, taking these logs and actually printing them to a Discord bot instead of just on your terminal. So if you do set up a, a directory copy that happens each week, you can kind of get the status once a week uh, on Discord without having to log into your server and check the logs or anything like that, which is a neat little addition. And uh, there's some other interesting stuff in there too. Thank you for watching this video. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. Always happy to help. Have a great day.